the diverting history of john gilpin showing how he went farther than he intended and came safe home again by william cowper read for LibriVox.org by Yule niedermeyer john gilpin was a citizen of credit and renown a train band captain eke was he of famous london town john gilpin's bow said to her dear though where did we have been these twice ten tedious years yet we no holiday have seen to-morrow is our wedding day and we will then repair unto the bell at edmonton all in a chaise and pair my sister and my sister's child myself and children three will fill the chaise so you must ride on horseback after we he soon replied i do admire of womankind but one and you are she my dearest dear therefore it shall be done i am a linen draper bold as all the world doth know and my good friend the calendar will lend his horse to go quoth mrs gilpin that's well said and for that wine is dear we will be furnished with our own which is both bright and clear john gilpin kissed his loving wife what joy it was he to find that though on pleasure she was spent she had a frugal mind the morning came the chaise was brought but yet was not allowed to drive up to the door lest all should say that she was proud so three doors off the chaise was stayed where they did all get in six precious souls and all agog to dash through thick and thin smack went the whip round went the wheels were never folks so clad the stones to rattle underneath as if cheapside were mad john gilpin at his horse's side seized fast the flowing mane and up he got in haste to ride but soon came down again for saddle tree scarce reached had he his journey to begin when turning round his head he saw three customers come in so down he came for loss of time although it grieved him sore yet loss of pence full well he knew would trouble him much more twas long before the customers were suited to their mind when betty screaming came downstairs the wine is left behind good luck quoth he yet bring it me my leathern belt likewise in which i bear my trusty sword when i do exercise now mistress gilpin careful soul had two stone bottles found to hold the liquor that she loved and keep it safe and sound each bottle had a curling ear through which the belt he drew and hung a bottle on each side to make his balance true then over all that he might be equipped from top to toe his long red cloak well brushed and neat he manfully did throw now see him mounted once again upon his nimble steed full slowly pacing over the stones with caution and good heed but finding soon a smoother road beneath his well-shod feet the snorting beast began to trot which galled him in his seat so fair and softly john he cried but john he cried in vain the trot became a gallop soon in spite of curb and rein so stooping down as needs he must who cannot sit upright he grasped the mane with both his hands and eked with all his might his horse who never in that sort had handled been before what thing upon his back had got did wonder more and more away went gilpin neck or not away went head and wig he little dreamt when he set out of running such a rig the wind did blow the cloak did fly like streamer long and gay till loop and button failing both at last it flew away then might all people well discern the bottles he had slung a bottle swinging at each side as hath been said or sung the dogs did bark the children screamed up flew the windows all and every soul cried out well done as loud as he could brawl away went gilpin who but he his fame soon spread around he carries weight he rides a race tis for a thousand pound and still as fast as he drew near twas wonderful to few how in a trice the turnpike man their gates wide open threw and now as he went bowing down his reeking head full low the bottles twain behind his back were shattered at a blow down ran the wine into the road most piteous to be seen which made the horse's flanks to smoke as they had bastard been but still he seemed to carry weight with leathern girdle braced for all might see the bottle necks still dangling at his waist thus all through merry islington these gambles he did play until he came unto the wash of edmonton so gay and there he threw the wash about on both sides of the way just like unto a trundling mob or a wild goose at play at edmonton his loving wife from the balcony spied her tender husband wondering much to see how he did ride stop stop john gilpin here's the house they all at once did cry the dinner waits and we are tired said gilpin so am i but yet his horse was not a whit inclined to tarry there for why his owner had a house full ten miles off at where so like an arrow swift he flew shot by an archer strong so did he fly which brings me to the middle of my song 
away went gilpin out of breath and sore against his will till at his friend the calendars his horse at last stood still the calendar amazed to see his neighbour in such trim laid down his pipe flew to the gate and thus accosted him what news what news your tidings tell tell me you must and shall say why beheaded you are come or why you come at all now gilpin had a pleasant wit and laughed a timely joke and thus unto the calendar in merry guise he spoke i came because your horse would come and if i well forbode my hat and wig will soon be here they are upon the road the calendar right glad to find his friend in merry pin returned him not a single word but to the house went in when straight he came with hat and wig a wig that flowed behind a hat not much the worse for wear each comely in its kind he held them up and in his turn thus showed his ready wit my head is twice as big as yours they therefore needs must fit but let me scrape the dirt away that hangs upon your face and stop and eat for well you may be in a hungry case said john it is my wedding day and all the world would stare if wife should dine at edmonton and i should dine at ware so turning to his horse he said i am in haste to dine Tis for your pleasure you came here you shall go back for mine ah luckless speech and bootless boast for which he paid full dear for while he spake a braying ass did sing most loud and clear whereat his horse did snort as he had heard a lion roar and galloped off with all his might as he had done before away went gilpin and away went gilpin's head and wig he lost them sooner than at first for why they were too big now mistress gilpin when she saw her husband posting down into the country far away she pulled out half a crown and thus unto the youth she said that drove them to the bell this shall be yours when you bring back my husband safe and well the youth did ride and soon did meet john coming back amain whom in a trice he tried to stop by catching at his rein but not performing what he meant and gladly would have done the frighted steed he frighted more and made him faster run away went gilpin and away went postboy at his heels the postboy's horse right glad to miss the lumbering of the wheels six gentlemen upon the road thus seeing gilpin fly with postboy scampering in the rear they raise the you and cry stop thief stop thief a highwayman not one of them was mute and all and each that passed that way did join in the pursuit and now the turnpike gates again flew open in short space the tall man thinking as before that gilpin rode a race and so he did and won it too for he got first to town nor stopped till where he had got up he did again get down now let us sing long live the king and gilpin long live he and when he next the thrite abroad may i be there to see end of poem this recording is in the public domain